You are sick. You have like a mental sickness or something. What did he just say? Osama is taking things to a whole new level this week. He's been jerking Debbie around from the moment she arrived in Morocco. All she wants is a bit of clarity, but she's been pulled along and manipulated this entire time. But now, Osama is starting to lose control, and we're starting to see his true character. You're acting real cold-blooded right now. I want to talk about serious things, and you act like, a, oh, you're crazy, you're mentally ill. Up until now, Osama's been able to weasel his way out of trouble with some smooth talking and poetry. But that was only going to fly for so long. Debbie is wising up to his tricks, and she won't let him get out of this one. But before we dive into all the revelations and name calling, let's rewind back to the start of this episode, where Debbie is finding it very hard to adjust to life on Osama's family farm. I've been in third world countries before and, you know, was able to make do. I'm good at making do, but this is making don't, honey. Oh dear, not exactly a good start to life with her potential in-laws. Debbie may have been dreaming of her big move to Morocco, but she was imagining city life, life in Rabat, not life on a small rural farm. Although her issues aren't necessarily to do with the farm itself more with the conditions inside the farmhouse. The bathroom downstairs, yes, it, it has a regular toilet, but they put upholstery on the toilet seat. It's like, no, 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 no. Yeah, <laughs> not nice. Life in Morocco is definitely proving to be a real wake-up call. All the plans that Debbie thought she had seem to have changed. She thought that they'd be renting their own apartment in the capital city. But Osama broke the news that he wanted her to spend a two-month trial at his parents' farm. But after just one night at the farm, Debbie is ready to pack her bags and leave. The thought of staying any longer is terrifying for her. I got to shake Osama somehow, bribe him, do whatever it takes. But get me the hell out of Kemiset. Speaking of which, how is Osama this morning? Well, when he comes to Debbie's bedroom to greet her, he seems a little on edge. Sure, it may just be his strange personality, but he looks particularly stressed right now, like he's under a lot of pressure. And I think we're about to find out why. But uh, uh, what I wanted to do... What? You know, your family's been extra special to me. Thank you. And I've got special gifts for everyone. Really? Well, that made him smile, didn't it? Just the mention of gifts, and he goes from moody to happy. But he does warn Debbie. His mum, who yesterday seemed so uncomfortable with meeting Debbie for the first time, today is mysteriously too tired, or too disappointed in her son, maybe, to make it out of bed this morning. Debbie doesn't question this, but she does look a little suspicious. But either way, when she presents Osama's dad with her gift, he seems very appreciative. In fact, he says something very interesting. <laughs> is he just being polite, or is he really that excited to receive pencils and art supplies? I'm not sure, but I did notice how he said Debbie surprised him with it at the right time. <laughs> Interesting choice of words. Almost as if something was on his mind bothering him, but this has helped to ease his fears. So what exactly does Osama's dad think that Osama and Debbie's future holds? أنا فرحان بزاف وسعيد بأن أسامة غادي هاجر لأمريكا Hold on, where did he get that idea? It's all just become very clear what Osama told his family in order to have them accept this strange relationship. His dad is delighted at the idea Osama will have a future in the States. Just look at Debbie's face as she hears this translation. <laughs> Is it like he feel happy that you will help me? I mean, to go to the US, to make a future there. 
Debbie might be old, at least older than him, but she's not senile. That is not what they agreed. Look, before leaving America, Debbie got her assets in order, she consulted her attorney, she prepared her house, and she arrived in Morocco thinking she'd be staying there permanently. A lot of thought went into that. It may not necessarily have been good or sensible thoughts, but you can't say there was no planning involved. There clearly was. So I'm struggling to believe that this hasn't already been discussed and communicated with Osama and why he's chosen to tell his family a totally different version of events. So it's left to Debbie to try and set the record straight. I am moving here permanently. I bought all my things and suitcases to live here forever. Osama is looking mortified, like he wants to evaporate into the air and the mood of the entire conversation suddenly changes. It feels like she's just delivered some bad news instead of happy news. And it's no real surprise that everyone is now very confused. So you, you wanna stay here, I mean, living forever? Forever. His words are saying yes, but his head shaking tells a very different story. We're starting to see clear as day what Osama's plan has been all along. Now, Debbie doesn't understand Arabic, but you don't have to be a rocket scientist to understand what's going on here. This is not what Osama has been telling his family. And that seems like a pretty big thing to miscommunicate. <laughs> Keep in mind, Osama's sister probably knows him better than anyone. After all, he's already admitted that he's a loner. So if his sister's surprised, then it's likely because she's been told the opposite of what he's saying now. And judging by his facial expression, Osama knows he's just been caught in a lie. All of those sweet poetic messages that he's been sending Debbie for the last three years have only been telling half the story. Debbie should have trusted her gut instinct the first time she caught him lying. This was my Prince Charming and I'm starting to see somebody that I don't even know anymore. I don't know what Osama expected to happen in this situation. He's already admitted that he lured Debbie to Morocco under false pretenses. I can only assume that he expected to be able to work on her somehow while she was in Morocco, convince her that they're better off in America. Maybe that explains why he wanted her to spend two months at his parents' house, almost beating her into submission, making her hate the experience so much that she can't wait to go back to America. But the problem is, Debbie is very firm in her stance. She's not bringing Osama over to the States. Heck, he probably wouldn't get a visa anyway. And faced with that reality, Osama has now been dragged, kicking and screaming, into a very awkward conversation. Osama isn't going to the United States, and that wasn't our plan. Debbie tries her best to lay her cards on the table, to make it very clear what she will and won't be doing. And the conversation ends with everyone looking around very awkwardly and Debbie making a very pointed remark that seems to imply she's not at all happy with all of Osama's secrets and miscommunication. We still have a lot of talking to do as far as our plans go, because I don't like secrets, you know? So we join them later on that day with Osama taking Debbie on a tour of his farm. The plan is to pick the perfect spot where they can both paint the idyllic sunset, but not before a spot of donkey whispering. Through the branches, Osama is looking at Debbie like she's totally lost the plot. But Debbie seems to have struck up a friendship with the donkey. In fact, she's determined to get a ride. Osama warns her, Debbie, that's probably not a good idea. Let me try it. We have to punch because the sun will go down. But I want to ride the donkey. But fun-loving Debbie is undeterred. She's determined to get a ride. And much to Osama's annoyance, because you can tell he really isn't in the mood for this, he eventually gives in and lets Debbie have her way. I have always had an affinity for animals. Osama, slow down, please. And I connect with them. 
<laughs> Thankfully, there was no harm done, and Debbie was absolutely fine. She was able to laugh it off in a good-natured way. Even an uptight Osama couldn't help himself. We even got a smile from him, too. But, sadly, that smile is very short-lived. Because when they sit down to paint the sunset, Osama starts to get more and more visibly irritated with Debbie. Can I make it quiet so I can't think? And Osama, okay, I'll shut up. Bum, bum, bum. Ba -da -bum. Osama looks like he's fighting the urge to run into the sunset. He doesn't seem like someone who's happy to be spending quality time with his partner. And the issue is clearly deeper than just silence while he paints. He's still angry about what happened earlier, about being exposed like that in front of his family. The thing is, this isn't actually new behaviour. We've seen this cold, snappy, emotionless side to Osama before. You really screwed up big time, Osama. Why? It's like shame on you. Why? Because I said the truth. It seems like whenever he's not in the driver's seat, Osama gets angry. And it's only a matter of time before this side of him resurfaces. Now, Debbie attempts to raise the issue of what happened earlier in the day. She wants to talk to Osama about their plans. For her, at least, there's no time like the present. When I talk about the future and needing security, you always kind of say, well, we'll talk about it later. To no one's surprise, once again, it's Debbie that's the mature one. But what Osama doesn't seem to understand is that Debbie is 67. Sure, she's fun-loving, and sure, she's willing to move to Morocco. But she really wants to know how the next chapter of her life is going to look. That's not unreasonable, but if she was hoping to be able to make plans with Osama, she might need to think again. I mean, how much forward planning can you really expect from a 24-year-old who's never had a job because he thinks hard work kills creativity? It's not the right time to talk about plans now. It's well, time for creating. You can do both at the same time. No, I can't. At this stage, Osama may as well pretend that he doesn't speak English. But notice how calm Debbie is. She's repeated herself a dozen times. It must feel like she's banging her head against a wall. But somehow, there's always an excuse for not wanting to talk. But hang on, wasn't Osama the one who said he didn't understand the specifics of the plan? I mean, I'm sorry because last night it was a mis misunderstood in the translations and you know, we put like a plan in general, but we didn't focus on the detail. So when exactly do you want to talk about the details, Osama? Because I keep having to remind myself that Debbie's only been in Morocco for a couple of days. The way Osama's acting, it's like she's been nagging him his entire life. He's acting like a moody teenager. He won't even dignify her by looking up at her. All he wants to do is get on with his painting and conveniently ignore all of the problems that he created. This whole dynamic is starting to feel like a mum trying to persuade her son to do something. And when Debbie tries once more to get some answers from him, Osama snaps. We'll not do everything in one day. You are sick. You have like a mental sickness or something. What? Wow. To accuse Debbie of being mentally ill is way out of line and way out of proportion. What makes that insult even more hurtful, however, is when you remember that Debbie had a very tough upbringing precisely because her mum had mental health issues. We don't know for sure, but you do have to question whether Osama was aware of that when he chose that insult. Look, the truth is, he was the one that was begging Debbie to come to Morocco, not the other way around. Now that she's asking for a little clarity, he's yelling at her and insulting her. I want to talk about serious things and you act like, a, oh, you're crazy, you're mentally ill. Osama's insult has understandably really annoyed Debbie, but Osama shows no remorse. Instead, he takes this opportunity to try and lay down the law. This is his cue to try and issue a threat and an ultimatum. What is it that he wants? Our plan is you will come here and bring me to the USA 
and I will go to work there and we start our life there. And there it is. Osama wants to move to America, supposedly to work. How much work he'd actually do, given his employment history, I think we all know. But now, at least the cat's out of the bag, because it feels like we've been dancing around this since we first met him. It's actually a relief to finally hear him say it. But did you hear what else he said there? He referred to it as our plan. Our plan is you will come here and bring me to the USA. From what we've been told, that was never the plan with Debbie. So who is he referring to when he says our plan? Is this something he's been talking about with his family perhaps? Because Debbie certainly wasn't in on it. This is our plan and I will from this day never change it. If you don't accept this, we can't stop all this. We're finally getting to see Osama's true colours here. This was his plan all along. He saw Debbie as his meal ticket out of Morocco. And now that he's starting to see that that might not come true, he's telling Debbie, it's my way or the highway. If you ask me, it's time to hit the road, Debbie. 